you know, I know Josh was telling me off the air, Mitch Lawrence, our next guest, was asking him how the reaction was. And I would say it's like, what would you tell him? I think it's like 75-25, I would say, in favor of what happened. Ben Simmons had to go. He didn't want to be here. If you were told by Ben Simmons, I don't want to be here, Mitch Lawrence, I think Daryl Morey got the best player he could have in return while the whole league knew that Ben Simmons didn't want to be here. So how would you grade the job Daryl Morey did today? He got the player he's always wanted. I mean, we, we talked last year before James Harden even went to Brooklyn that Daryl Morey was trying to get James Harden out of Houston because he thinks James Harden's a better offensive player than Michael Jordan. And he said that many times, mm-hmm. so he thinks he did great. Now, is James Harden going to be in shape? Is he going to have hamstring problems? Does he get along with Joel and Embiid? Blah, blah, you know, on and on and on. And when you get to the playoffs, is James Harden going to make big shots or is he going to do what he did in Houston and underachieve in spots? I mean, those are all legitimate questions, but I can see from the Philly fan standpoint, he got rid of a guy who was in a holdout of a four-year, $150 million year, didn't want to be there, and quite frankly, you know, was a crybaby when it came to how he was treated by his teammates and coach when he screwed up mightily in the playoffs. You know, refusal to shoot, couldn't make free throws, getting benched, and on. it's obvious he had to get moved. So both guys, you know, had to, their, their franchises had to do something because James Harden apparently didn't want to be in Brooklyn anymore. Right. You know, he didn't want to be with Kevin Durant. And I think his bigger problem was Kyrie Irving. You know, if Kyrie Irving gets vaccinated last fall to start a camp, this trade's not getting made. This trade's not going to get made. Oh, no. They'll all be playing together. Mitch, I, you know, I, now Kyrie might be getting injured. And, you know, but if they had all three guys together from the get-go, it'd probably be a lot different. Right. The, the, the multitude of factors that happen cause Harden to no longer want to be there. Um, that being said, Mitch Lawrence is with us, Sirius XM's NBA radio. You said last week uh, on Sirius XM that Joel Embiid is rolling towards the MVP. So pairing him with Harden will do what with that? How will the Sixers look with that tandem? I think, I think James Harden, you know, there are a lot of questions when James Harden went to Brooklyn about, oh, my God, he's dominated the ball, the high usage rate. Now he's got to play with Durant and Kyrie Irving. How's he going to adjust? He adjusted fine. There were parts of last season where he looked like the MVP. And he actually, people were like, wow, he actually adjusted. I think James Harden will adjust to playing with Joe Owen and be fine. And I would expect as long as Joel Embiid can stay healthy, he'll keep rolling towards that first MVP. I think the fact that Harden is leaving a place he didn't want to be, he's hooked up with Daryl Morey again, who he obviously likes. He's going to play with Joel Embiid. I think they'll be able to work things out. The big question is James Harden durability. James Harden has hamstring problems, you know? So, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot still – You know, for both teams, I mean, look, Ben Simmons going to Brooklyn, that brings up all kinds of questions, too, about how he's going to coexist with those guys and whether, hey, we'll find out about, you know, we're not going to know anything about Ben Simmons until the playoffs roll around, until that part where he has to make big free throws or if he's underneath the basket by himself, does he dunk the ball or does he give it up? I mean, that's when you're going to find out in the pressure of the moment. So both teams are kind of like bringing on these guys who have big questions about, what they're going to do for him. Yeah, no question. Harden with the hamstring, and is he in shape? Uh, Even though he's not having a great year, 22 points, 8 rebounds, 10 assists. I mean, I don't think people realize he's almost averaging a triple-double this year. Um, If he is the healthy James Harden and wants to be there, which we think he does, does that make Philly a favorite, Brooklyn a favorite with Ben Simmons, Kyrie, Durant, Curry, Drummond, or do you still like Milwaukee, Miami, or somebody else? Well, I've been big on Mil. I thought going into this year, no matter what was going to happen, Milwaukee was going to get back to an NBA Finals. They're just their big three guys proved it last year. You got Giannis, who took his game to another level in the Finals with a historic dominant performance. He went from a bad free throw shooter. Pay attention, Ben Simmons, in one series to. Basically, not you know, basically being an unbelievable free throw shooter in a clutch closeout game, it was 17 of 19. Is he still a little iffy at times? Yeah, but I mean, you saw what he could do. And the other two guys stepped up big, and I think they helped themselves get Serge Ibaka in case Brooke Lopez can't come back. So I'm still picking Milwaukee. I thought it'd be them and Phoenix 
When I went into the season, I figured it'd be a repeat finals, and I still like the Suns. They've been, you know, the best team in basketball. They help themselves getting Torrey Craig for depth. As long as Chris Paul stays upright, they're going to be the best team, I think, in the West, even with Golden State. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not picking Brooklyn or, uh, or Philly in this, from this. I still pick Milwaukee. Miami is an interesting team because, you know, they made all those moves, and Kyle Lowry's back. He had a situation with his mom where he had to leave and, you know, take some personal time. Hopefully everything's good there. And they've got a real good balanced team. They play defense. I just don't worry about their size. They play Joel Embiid or they play Giannis in the playoffs. Uh, They're just not a very big team uh, with Bam Adebayo and guys. So it's going to be the great thing about the East, Mike, not only have those teams, but you got guys, you know, teams like Cleveland, which could be a top four team with their addition to Karis LeVert and, uh, you know, Boston, They made an interesting move with Derek White. They're not in the front tier. You know, the top tier is still, to me, Milwaukee and then Miami under them, and then we'll see what happens with uh, Brooklyn and Philly. Uh, Mitch Lawrence, Sirius XM NBA Radio. We knew Simmons hasn't played. Now, he is scheduled to play in Philadelphia March the 10th. Do we think we'll see Ben Simmons back between now? He's got one month. Will he be back playing for the Nets within the month? I won a few bets a couple of years ago when I bet people – that Kyrie Irving would not play in Boston Garden in front of, you know, this is before COVID in front of fans. And I'm not still sure he might have, he might have, but I know that first year, uh, calendar year or whatever, Kyrie Irving wanted no part of the Boston Garden. Because remember, he once said, oh yeah, I'll resign here. I want to be here as long as people, you know, and then, then he basically forced his way out. I expect the same thing with Ben Simmons. I would not expect that he will be available to play in that game in Philadelphia, but I'll be, Hey, I'll be pleasantly surprised if I'm wrong. And he endures all the booing that he's going to hear. It'll be a great, it'll be great theater. And it'll be right up there with when I went to see LeBron return to Miami, um, excuse me, return to Cleveland that first time. It can, actually, because it's Philadelphia, it could even be worse, but that LeBron <laughs> going back to Cleveland for the first time, that really is at the top of my list for the all time, most venomous, vicious crowds returning uh, the once conquering hero. Uh, Mitch, I, I, you know, there were a couple other things that happened. Obviously, Simmons and Harden, those two guys. I mean, Simmons goes to Brooklyn. Is this a great spot for him, a guy who doesn't want to shoot, a guy who doesn't want to be an aggressive offensive player, but offers a lot of other things that people maybe don't appreciate as much? Is going to Brooklyn the, the, the perfect spot for him? In some ways, it is. You know, they're going to be a better defensive team right off the bat. You've seen the Nets play. I mean, you remember, they gave up a lot of defense in Jared Allen when they traded for James Harden. They gave up a lot for James Harden, period, uh, for all those 16 games that the big three there played together. But they're going to be a better defensive team with Ben Simmons, there's no doubt. If, if there, something happens with the vaccine, uh, vaccine mandate and Kyrie can play full-time, then you'll have a full-time Kyrie with Kevin Durant. You don't have to worry about Ben Simmons you know, as a scorer until teams start fouling him in the playoffs, right? I mean, then we're going to find out what he can do right. if he could withstand the pressure. By the way, with all this time off, did he actually get better? Has he worked on his free throw shooting? My guess is no. So, um, you know, look, Drummond helps them uh, in terms of, you know, right now Nick Claxton's their last line of defense, and he's thin and soft. So at least Drummond gives them a bigger body. But in terms of Ben Simmons, yeah, I mean, you play with Kevin Durant. You know what? Yeah, that is better. Now, usually it's better because Kevin Durant either scores or he's so good at, at finding the open man with the double team, that guy just has to shoot. That's the big question with Ben Simmons. Does he want to shoot? Kevin Durant's going to find him. It's up to Ben Simmons to actually work up the courage to shoot the ball. Um, I do want to get a quick thought. What is Washington's thought? They got Porzingis today. What are they? What's the thought process there? They blew up what, a lot of what they did recently, right? They traded off Harrell. And he's a nice player, but he can wear out his welcome as he did in L.A. and he's done in Washington. And they, and they got rid of Dinwiddie. And I went into this season thinking, oh, boy, they better be careful because Spencer Dinwiddie has a reputation of being a me-first player. And that's not a good guy to have in my book around a guy like a Bradley Beal. So, and, you, know, you know, I know Porzingis has been hurt a lot. And, you know, he's, he's kind of the ultimate tease because when he plays and he's on the court, wow. He's, he can, you know, he's a big time offensive player and he's actually had some moments defensively, but he doesn't play nearly enough. He's always getting hurt. There's always problems. There's always issues with his reliability. Um, but Dallas took on 
a big contract in Bertans, and they take on Dinwiddie. And, you know, it's going to be interesting now. Dinwiddie has to get the ball out of uh, Luka Doncic's hands somehow, which he may be able to do, but we'll see. But Washington, they got off to an amazing start, but they've been bad for a big stretch of this season. So their people down there decided they need to blow up some things, so they got rid of some people, and we'll see what happens. I just don't think they're going to be a factor anyway with Bradley Beal out for the rest of the year with uh, surgery. All right, Mitch Lawrence, Sirius XM NBA Radio. I'm sure that uh, the next time you are on the radio, there will be plenty to react to as a lot of trades happened over the last 48 hours. The biggest, James Harden, Ben Simmons, they switched spots. Brooklyn and Philly, we'll see if they happen to meet up in the playoffs. Right now, Brooklyn's in the eighth spot. Philadelphia, I think, is in the five uh, in the current Eastern Conference standing. But things are about to heat up. 30 games or so left for teams in the NBA. It's good to catch up with you, Mitch. We'll be talking to you, bud. Mike, always a pleasure. Take care. All right. Philadelphia is in the five spot, two and a half games behind Miami for first. Brooklyn is five and a half back. They are in the eighth spot.